IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everybody, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. Today I'm speaking with Larry Greenblatt. He is the lead singer of Philadelphia's premier cyberpunk band, Gung Ho, entertaining for over 30 years. He's also a martial artist and holds numerous certifications, including a third degree black belt in the Joe Lewis fighting system. Now Larry also has another little hobby in computer security, and he's managed to tie this together with his music in a video he created called Crypto. Now this video has received numerous accolades, including recognition from the Wireshark community, and he's been recently asked to give a presentation describing how he used the Wireshark tool to create the video. So Larry, would you like to summarize for us how you made all of this happen? Yeah, I was um, sitting in a hotel and came up with a song uh, based in crypto. And I just started thinking it would be a neat idea to write like a love song, but uh, comparing the three basic uh, encryption algorithms. So I was symmetric key. I was like, I'm going to share a secret with you. First, we have to agree. And I was just like tying it all together, and it came out kind of cute. And then I said, like, you know what? I should have show somebody what I didn't, what I'm actually talking about from a, uh, a, a technological p perspective. So I used Wireshark to sniff out an SSL handshake with uh, Gmail. And so I made it everything map up the, the words to the song, which are really kind of a cryptic love song, but at the same time, it was directly involved with IT. And, and it, it relates, you know, the words map up to it. And there's a uh, particular mantra of Wireshark users, and that is packets don't lie. You can have the opinion of a developer, of a user, or whatever, but give me the packet trace, because I want to see packets don't lie. So throughout the video, I don't really know. I was like, I don't know what's really going on, but here's how it seems to me, and I show the packet trace. And it just it went over really big. I started getting um, uh, emails from people. Clement Dupuis really helped out a lot. He, he uh, posted on his website, and I got the, it's funny, with my band, most of our songs get a couple hundred hits on YouTube after years. We did have one song hit a thousand. This song in a month hit 3,000. So, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, so it was kind of weird. Uh, actually, the band's recording it now, so we can put it together and do it the right way. Because the whole thing was, this is really embarrassing. I did the song earlier with the band that week. It was a new tune that we wrote together. Then I go back in my hotel room and recorded it by myself and made this so. Yeah, so we're going to try and do this all over. Very cool. So you yeah. think that tying the two together and using the analogy has uh, let people understand the concepts behind crypto a little bit better? Uh, it, it seems. It's, it's funny. I had one of the posts, there's a number of comments if you look at the uh, YouTube comments, and one guy said it's a great lesson. He's making all his junior InfoSec guys watch the video. So I, I guess some people have found it pretty helpful. Yeah. It seems like it's definitely a fun way to learn. I watched it. I enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I didn't it was fun to make. A little bit of it, but I got the concept. Oh, uh, well, that's that's the thing. If you're not a packet nerd, <laughs> you, you might be a little like the rest of my band. They don't look at that and go, oh, that's sweet. So that's what's in that SSL TCP header? Oh, sweet. So they have no idea. It's a greenie. He's got a freaking computer chip in his head, but whatever. It came back kind of cool. Right. And your band has been together for 30 years. Uh, over 30 years. Uh, actually, yes. my drummer and I always knew each other. So he lived up the street from me when, since I'm a year older than he is. And we've always lived up the street from each other. We were childhood friends. Uh, the one guitarist moved in the neighborhood uh, seven years old, and we became good buddies. And we wanted to become rock stars. And eventually, at 17, we decided to do it. And we met uh, a bass player, Doug Kiker. And uh, Henry Tomangelo, Mitch Briggs, Doug Kiker, Larry Greenblatt, same guys for... Well, we started in 1980. So, 1980. Yeah. Wow. 32 years. Yeah. So how did you how did you get into the little hobby of computer security? Of oh, this? well, our producer, also the same guy for uh, over 30 years, is Otto Capabianco. Otto is the uh, founder of Nebula Recording. He helped discover the roots. And uh, Scott Storch. And Otto um, uh, was recording us, and I went upstairs, and he had just bought a Commodore 64. And this was in around 1982, 83, and I started playing with it. And I was like, this is awesome. And uh, he goes, hey, you should do what my brother Nicky did. He went to one of them Channel 29 shows, learned to fix computers in like eight months. He got a job two weeks before graduation. I was like, I should do that. If Nicky could do that, I could do that. <laughs> right? We'll pay the yeah. bill. 
<laughs> Actually, you know, I apologize. Otto doesn't talk like that. That would be more like Nikki. I'm sorry. That's how Nikki would have talked. Otto is more like, hey, you should do what my brother Nikki did. All right, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Um, yeah. So now this presentation you gave at Wireshark, it was a pretty big deal. You had a pretty big audience for what I Oh seen. my gosh, I was so nervous too because oh. they're my heroes. They are my heroes. Uh, uh, Laura Chapel, Hung Sun Bay, uh, Megumi Takshi Ta, these are the, the, the real top people to me, the, the packet sniffing nut nerds who know it all. Or not at all, but you know, they're certainly great. Uh, Betty Dubois. Uh, so. Betty Dubois was actually one of the people to see it. Uh, I posted on LinkedIn, and then Jeff Carroll, another great guy from the Wireshark community, said, Larry, you've got to present this at, at Wireshark, at Sharkfest. So I wrote them, and uh, Janice, who uh, works for Riverbed, said, absolutely. And they put me second. It's a, a four-day conference, and I was uh, actually to present uh, twice, and they had me the second presenter right after Hong Sun Bay. And Hunson Bay always demands a huge audience. So there's like three other sessions, but everybody sits in Hunson Bay. And then when it broke up, I just stayed in that big auditorium, and even he sat down. I was like, oh, no. Oh, oh no. Gosh. But then it was pretty funny. I bring up a, a packet trace, and I guess people just don't play with crypto enough. So I, I, one of the first things I, I brought up, I said, now, what's the difference between an SSL uh, filter where I'm looking for certificate versus for certificates? Or, or I'm sorry, it's actually uh, Cypher Suite versus Cypher Suites. And no hands went up. And I said, ooh, maybe I will be useful. So it was pretty cool. Apparently what I talked about was stuff that, uh, while it's kind of basic, not too many people look in that area. They're not really, you know, they, these Wireshark people, they know how to look at packets. They're just not looking necessarily at what I really do is check Google's ID. So the whole thing is when you go someplace in an SSL or any PKI environment, they give you a certificate. That certificate is their ID card. And I just show, because I'm from the neighborhood, that hey, you can always you know, mess with IDs. I know guys always selling bathtub sticker jobs somewhere. Right. So I just show, hey, you can mess somebody up. Well, how do I know that's true? How do I know that you didn't hack that? And I, by the end of it, you don't know. By the end of it, I don't know if I'm talking to Google. I just hope so. Right. Yeah. So it's kind of fun. And the video crypto, um, where can a person find this? Uh, on YouTube, and just uh, so far, I think it's only it's only two or three songs called Crypto, C R Y P T Zero, and they're all versions of this song. One was rehearsal with the band. One's an acoustic version I did a long or a year before, and then one's the uh, the one with the Wireshark background. So, how exactly does the crypto video explain crypto? Okay. Well, I use Wireshark, uh, as I said, to sniff out an SSL handshake with um, Google. Uh, at Gmail particularly. And so if you uh, take a look at some of my slides that I use in the background of the, uh, of the video, um, you can see what I'm talking about. So um, first, the mantra of packets do not lie. Now first, in the background, there's only three types of encryption algorithms. There's symmetric, asymmetric, and hashing algorithms. Symmetric is what we mostly think of. You share a secret with somebody. I share a secret. Secretly, I give you a key to the filing cabinet. No one else should know that key, just you and I. Uh, that's, for, that's tough. How do I get you that key encrypted? So that's already a challenge. So it's kind of like getting your initial password to email. I can't mail it to you. I need my password to email? Yes, I just mailed it to you. So that's a very big challenge. How do you share a secret? Um, then we have asymmetric algorithms where, well, let's go back. I'm sorry. If we can look at the shared secret, I gave you a key to the filing cabinet. You and I do have it. Let's assume we shared it. We don't just have the ability to now share secret messages between us. If you open up that cabinet and you see something in there that you know you didn't put in there, then you can say it came from Larry. So symmetric encryption doesn't give us the ability to get confidentiality. We get authenticity. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so now here's the problem. You open up the cabinet, and what's in there is a tuna fish sandwich because I was too lazy to go to the refrigerator, but I forgot about my – I went out for lunch, three-day weekend. You come in Tuesday morning, and your paper records smell like fish, yeah. and you're made it, and you, you tell the boss. And the boss calls me in. He says, why are you putting tuna fish sandwiches in the filing cabinet? I, go, I didn't do that. <laughs> he said, what do you mean you didn't do that? Hey, Alicia's got the key. How do you know Alicia didn't do it? They should have been acting freaky, too. I don't know if her and her boyfriend broke up or what, man. So I'll start blaming you. Now, you'll know I'm lying, but you can't prove that to a third party 
because yeah. we both shared that key, we will share the blame. Mm -hmm. If we have an IL2 algorithm, an asymmetric algorithm, I could lock the cabinet up with my private key. So say that top key in this green aisle is the private, and the one underneath it is the, is the public. Uh, I'll give the public out to anybody who wants it. The private stays with me. If I lock that cabinet with my private key, my public will open it, and only my public. And you'll know my private key was used. So theoretically, mathematically, asymmetric encryption provides a new feature, non-repudiation. We didn't share the private key, can't share the blame. So now when you call me, the boss calls me and says, Larry, your public key unlocks that safe or that, that cabinet. It had to be you who locked it. And mathematically, that sounds good. But I'm from the neighborhood, and I'm going to go, damn, somebody must have got a copy of my key. And that's a valid concern because we don't really keep them private. It's really easy to copy. I've been, had my warnings from Microsoft for the last 20 years probably telling me that if I don't install this patch, somebody could read something off of my machine without me letting them supposed to do it. So I don't believe that we don't have copies. And in addition to that, we've cracked the keys. So it's, it's pretty tough. All right, but assuming it does kind of work. The last algorithm is, is a hashing algorithm, and this isn't really to encrypt things. It's kind of hard to understand encryption sometimes because the words we use are cryptic. Crypt come from the Greek. It means to hide. Well, we're not hiding anything with a hash. What I'm doing is I take a picture of my car before I drop it off at the parking lot, and then when I give the guy the keys to my car and I'm worried that he's driving it around, I can come back and take a picture of it again and compare the two pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with this is if I leave the picture with him, I take a picture of the car and I leave it with him, or somebody, maybe I ordered the, a new car over the internet, and I saw the picture on the internet of what it was supposed to look like, what I thought, but now I get the car and I get a full-blown picture of it, and there's a dent in the car, but they also dented the picture. The guy just took a new picture of it. You have to authenticate the hash value, the message digest, and we can do that by encrypting it with the sender's private key. So this is how we mix things together. So now, what I did was I sniff out and prove it uh, when I go to uh, Sharkfest, or excuse me, Gmail, I see what my client will offer. I can offer these combinations of asymmetric, symmetric, and hashing algorithms. The most common would be RSA for my asymmetric algorithm, RC4 for my symmetric algorithm, and MD5 for my hashing algorithm. All pretty weak. So in the first verse of the song, I say, I want to share a little secret. But first, we must both agree. It's very tough to share the secret. And then asymmetric, I say in the song, you want to keep things private. I understand and I respect, because I respect the math behind private key. And the whole song is about Bob loving Alice. Right. All right. And then I show how the, uh, I sniff out the actual handshakes with um, Gmail. So, Again, when I get their public key, when you go to get a certificate, you're getting someone's public key. And that's their ID card. So we can see this ID card, it's a signed certificate, claims to be proof that this website I went to is Gmail. Uh, and that sounds, it all looks good. I can see that if their name is mail at gmail.com, blah, blah, blah. I uh, see who signed it or what algorithm was used. It's, uh, it was signed with RSA and SHA. And in the song, I'm saying, here's how it seems to me. The world seems so crazy sometimes, but I'm just telling you how it seems to me. And this is what I see really happened. I got a handshake. I was surprised to see they used elliptical curve as an asymmetric algorithm to share a key, an AES key, and RSA to sign the hash. That's pretty impressive. Uh, then I show how Bob writes an email, and I'm singing this song to somebody just saying, you're a superhero to anybody who understands technology, because I think that if you can get through these times, this wild west of understanding how these basic things work, your, your grandkids are going to be very grateful. Right. All right. And then finally, uh, the last verse of the song is, how do I know it's really you? And what you say is true. I know there's things I can't deny. Well. How do I know it's uh, really you is to authenticate? And what you say is true, I'm checking the hash value. And I know there's things I can't deny, that's the idea of me locking the safe with my private key. Supposedly I can't deny it. Right. So I tied it all up that way, and yeah, I just show how these things work. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, 
it's really basic stuff. I mean, if you were to ask Bruce Schneier, this is kindergarten stuff. Yeah. But it's an area that I find most people don't look. And I was really happy to see that, uh, I mean, well, I, I thought the people at the Shark Fest would have known more. Uh, maybe they did and they didn't speak up. Yeah. But it really made me feel useful that I'm just looking in an area that other people haven't explored. We say in security that awareness is your number one countermeasure. If you're not aware of what these certificates are and what they do, then it's really going to be very easy to lie to you about them. Why do you think it is that people aren't paying attention to this stuff in the first place? Uh, there's probably a lot of reasons. Their job's already complicated enough. But uh, honestly, I, th I blame a lot of um, people who overteach crypto. They teach encryption as if uh, you'd be fascinated by the history of it. And it's, to me, kind of like um, learning how to drive a car by first studying Henry Ford's childhood. I don't know that that's really effective, and it's right. probably it's vital that people learn how to drive properly. They learn how to respect the rules of the road. That they learn that not everybody is respecting the rules of the road. You know, I know that when a, re a red light comes, I need to stop. And when a green light goes, technically I can go, but I know not everybody's following those rules, and I look around. I don't think people because they are uh, they're over whelmed with the mumbo jumbo of technology, they, they know how to look around on what's really a relatively simple road if it's presented properly. Right. Well, I think you presented it well. You definitely simplified it and applied it to a good metaphor of the Bob Loves Alice and the keys and the key to her heart and everything. And Yes, and it, it, well, the whole thing was, uh, this is why he can't deny. You know, this is the slide I show, and I know there's things I can't deny. He creates a message. He creates a message digest, the hash value of the message. That's the, the taking a picture of his car before he dropped it off at the lot. But he encrypted it with his private key, the message digest. So now Alice will use his public key to decrypt it. No, it came from you, Bob. You locked that up. If your public key unlocks it. So that's why I know there's things I can't deny. And the right. funny thing about a, a, a um, digital signature, you shop at the crypto mart. For four services, you want confidentiality. You want to. I got to keep secret. I want authenticity. I want to know that I'm getting what I think it is. It came from Microsoft. Uh, I want integrity. If I'm downloading a service pack, I want to know that it it wasn't altered. And um, I want non-repudiation. That Microsoft can't blame anybody else and say that. Well, digital signatures give you three of those four services. Right. And unlike the Greek word crypt, they don't crypt anything. When you download a digitally signed message, it's not encrypted. It's not important to Microsoft who reads Service Pack 2. It's important to the consumer that it came from Microsoft. It wasn't altered. Microsoft can't blame anybody. Three of the four services we get from encryption don't crypt anything. Right. Yeah, it's tough. So, Larry, your next big gig, I know, is um, you will be teaching Secure Ninja's Cyber Savages course um, in Alexandria next week. So, tell us about that. How excited are you? Oh, this is going to be awesome. Um, my, my good friend, Ralph H. Mendia, uh, fresh off of a stint helping um, uh, produce a movie. Actually, he was the hacking consultant in uh, Savages an Oliver Stone movie, and he has a cameo in, in it as well. But he's just a piece of work. I love Ralph. He is an out-of-the-box thinker, and uh, it's funny. He's not uh, not that I'm real classically trained, but I guess over the years of working in ops and, and stuff, I, I'm a little more, um, I guess, conventional in some things. Ralph is very unconventional, but he's just awesome. I love the way he thinks, and I'm just really looking forward to hanging out. And I know the students are going to have a blast. Because when I teach, I teach this class, the CEH class, uh, uh, about a dozen times a year. And I often invoke Ralph. And, in fact, in, in my, uh, my uh, CISSP classes as well, uh, Ralph has done a number of pen tests. And I love his stories. And I just love impersonating as well. He's just a great guy. I would love him to hear that. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> this is one of my pen tests that he tells that I love. He goes, all right, dude. So I gotta, you know, I gotta try and uh, break into this building, you know. It's a physical pen test and everything, you know. And they got armed guards and shit. They got a university nearby, so I'm like, hey, they got a, they got a drama group. Yeah, they do. You know, so I hire this actress, dude. Her role, and she's good at, it, dude, is she's gonna be this uh, uh, girl's doing a uh, interview with their network manager. We get up there, and I'm the film crew, dude. So I'm holding the camera the whole time. 
know. And uh, she goes, hi, I'm here to do my interview with your network manager. And Guard looks up and goes, I don't have any records, honey. You know, you're going to have to call back when you reschedule. And she's, like, she's a good actress, too. So she's like, oh, my God, my God, my report's tomorrow. My God, I'm done. I'm done. Goes, All right, hold on, hold on. You know, everybody wants help, pretty girl, dude. You know, so he calls up, you know. And he's, All right, send her in. All right. So he unlocks the gate. You know, I'm pretty much the dude. So I got the gate. You know, then we go in to introduce this network manager, you know. Oh, he loves having this chick, dude. He's logging into all kinds of consoles, you know, showing off. I'm videotaping the whole thing. I didn't have to run a tool, dude. I had every password right there. Dude, it was so funny. For our presentation, I had already hacked into the check printing printer. I'd already printed our pre-negotiated price, you know. So I get there. So in conclusion, if somebody will just go over to HP Printer 401, you know, you'll find a check in there. It needs a signature. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I mean, that story's crazy. Isn't it crazy? He's he awesome, just, man. He was pretending to film. He was just filming this guy log into all of his stuff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Ralph work. He really is a great social engineer. I'm a total nerd I'm trying to pull that off. Like He can go to, uh, he said, it's an old uh, hacker's trick, but you go find out where the, where the smokers are. So I'll sit out there and he's like, hey, what's your name? Steve, right? And I'm like, no, it's Bob. Bob, Bob, yeah, how you doing? You know, my name's uh, Fred. I, I just got a job. In, uh, uh, I mean, so you, you're uh, you're in uh, an engineering, right? He goes, no, I'm in sales. Oh, yeah, sales. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do the email service around here, blah, 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 blah. You know, next thing you know, the guy's holding the door for him on the way. Nice. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Yeah, for me that would be tough because I take a hit and then it <coughs> really <laughs> smoke right? yeah. cigarettes. Right? <laughs> so definitely, the Cyber Savages course is going to be amazing. It's uh, next week, September seventeenth through the twenty-first. If you haven't signed up yet, there is still time. Go to secureninja.com/savages. And Larry, thank you so much for speaking with us. You're very welcome. Thank you. Good luck teaching the course next week. Have so much fun with Ralph and Tom up to Grove. And let us know how it went. I think we're going to get some, uh, some coverage of the course to post on our YouTube channel. So um, everyone, make sure you check out both Larry's video, Crypto, spelled with a zero, as well as Secure Ninja's YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Secure Ninja. And also, be sure to like us on Facebook so you can get all the updates on all the videos and everything we do, as well as follow us on Twitter, of course. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Alicia Webb, and it's Secure Ninja TV. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts. No!